smoke is driven away, so drive them away like wax that melts before the fire. So the wicked shall perish at the presence of God. God is in his holy place. God who unites those who dwell in his house. But the upright shall rejoice at the presence of God. They shall exult with glad rejoicing. Oh, sing to God, make music to his name. Extol the one who rides on the clouds. The Lord is his name, exult at his presence. God is in his holy place. God who you know. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This Mass is offered for Rose, Maria, and Alberto, Angelucci. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I've done and in what I've failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Father, 
You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive the prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God, the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing to Elisha, the man of God, 20 barley loaves made from the first fruits and fresh grain in the ear. Elisha said, give it to the people to eat. But his servant objected, how can I set this before a hundred people? Elisha insisted, give it to the people to eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and there shall be some left over. And when they had eaten, there was some left over, as the Lord had said. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. One body and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him. Because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick, Jesus went up on the mountain. And there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, 200 days wages worthy of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what good are these for so many? Jesus said, have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place. So the men reclined about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, 
gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled 12 wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, this is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off, make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, I warmly welcome you to this Mass and say thank you for coming. Four years ago, I think I should begin with some good news. Four years ago, on a day like this, Pope Francis instituted this day and he called it the World Day for the Elderly and Grandparents. Following the the feast of Saints Joachim and Anne that we celebrated on Friday. And so it is good news for all those that are 60 years and above. And we say, happy feast that you all, elderly and grandparents. And on Friday, those that follow what is happening in the Vatican, the Holy Father also guided that today whoever will visit any of these people that are 60 years and above will receive a plenary indulgence. Look at this opportunity, brothers and sisters. There are many elderly in houses, homes of assisted living, in hospices. I think it is a wonderful idea that today you can spend some time, go visit them, and you will share this plenary indulgence. So happy feast to all the elderly here present and to those that are elsewhere at home. Today when we celebrate the 17th Sunday in ordinary time, we can have many ideas to meditate upon from these readings. We can think about, you know, the providence of God, the unfailing providence of God. And we have seen Jesus feeding 5,000 men. We have also had the prophet Elijah simply with 20 pieces of, you know, loaves. He fed 100 people. And for us, all eating in Scripture is pointing to the Eucharist, the meal. And of course, call to share in this meal. Maybe we can also have another theme. We see how God uses very humble hands, the hands of the prophet Elisha, the hands of the prophet, I mean, of this little young man in the first reading. And you know, out of their generosity, they are willing to share. And look at how God multiplies the little that they have, and it is all sufficient for them. And so a Christian is one that is willing to share. A Christian is never selfish. A Christian should be generous, reaching out with one's time, one's talents, reaching out to other people. And today, most especially, we are talking about the elderly. I've been studying at the BC, the Klaus School of Theology and Ministry, and I've been doing internship at St. Elizabeth Hospital. And I know how many of these elderly are abandoned there, abandoned literally. And so today when we talk about sharing, we can talk about sharing our time with the elderly, listening to them, listening to their stories, 
And I want to urge young people here present, go and sit at the feet of these elderly people. There is a lot to learn, to learn from their wisdom, to learn the secret of life. How do you go through life? How to avoid mistakes? Oftentimes the young despise the elderly. And the elderly also look at the young and say, well, you might not go far away. And so there is, you know, intergenerational kind of, you know, people despising one another. Today when we speak about the elderly, we also speak about the young. Because Pope Francis is calling upon the young to listen to the elderly. Listen to their advice. Use your energy and using it in the right direction. It saves community a lot of challenges. The second reading has spoken about unity. Whoever shares in the Eucharist is called to contribute towards unity. A couple that receives Holy Communion is called to remain together. There is a lot of, you know, divorce, and you can read about it. When we receive the Eucharist, the Eucharist is inviting us to remain together. And that is one of the four marks of the church. The church is one, the church is holy, the church is Catholic, and the church is apostolic. And so unity in the church is very important. Unity in leadership, unity in liturgy, unity in the sacraments, the profession of the same faith, and all these other aspects as we have heard them enumerated by Paul in the second reading. And maybe the last idea that we can have from this, from the, the, the gospel text, we have heard Jesus say, gather the fragments left over such that nothing will be wasted. Some people don't seem to know that there is what we call the sin of prodigality, the sin of wastefulness. When you read from the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 11, chapter 15, from verse 11 to 32, you will see this young man who was wasteful with the resources of his father. Wastefulness. So Jesus says, gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted. Some people will eat and maybe have a lot wasted. A Christian does not waste food. A Christian does not waste resources. A Christian does not waste time. A Christian does not waste anything. And so this is a wonderful instruction, a reminder from Christ to us today not to be wasteful. There are many other poor people in many places, in many countries that are poor. And you have been of much help, and we continue to call upon your help, your support. But even locally, there are many people that are struggling, struggling economically, that need our attention. Let's be attentive to the needs of other people through our sharing. This is our prayer, through Christ our Lord. May we stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things we are made, for us men and for us salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For us sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. For the Pope's monthly intention, that the sacrament of the anointing of the sick confer to those who receive it and their loved ones the power of the Lord and become ever more a visible sign of compassion and hope for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> for Cardinal Sean, our Archbishop, and all the bishops, that they may exercise their ministry with supernatural courage and fidelity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our political leaders, that they heed the calling of God to build a culture of life beginning with natural conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us who hunger for meaning and purpose in our daily lives, that our needs will be satisfied by turning to Jesus, the living bread. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the soldiers on active duty and the first responders that they persevere in faith with courage, hope, and strength, nourished by Jesus, the living bread. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those being held hostage, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and in distress in any way, especially those listed in a bulletin, that they may be strengthened by the hope of the Lord's resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world peace, especially conflicts in the Middle East and in Russia, Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our beloved who have gone before us, may they find a new home in the mystery of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember Rose, Maria, and Alberto Angelucci, for whom this Mass is being celebrated. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for listening to our prayers and answering them according to your holy will, through Christ our Lord.
psalms to the Lord, you faithful ones. Give thanks to his holy name. His anger lasts a moment, his favor all through life. At night comes tears, but dawn brings joy. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and have not let my enemies rejoice over me. I said to myself in my good fortune, I shall never be shaken. O oh Lord, your favor had set me like a mountain stronghold. Then you hid your face, and I was put to confusion. I will extol you, O oh Lord, for you have drawn me up and have not. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, all is and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through whom, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Oh. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that have failed us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Cardinal Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Are the Savior's command and from by divine teaching we dare to say Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, not rather that you should enter under my roof, but only say what my soul shall be. of 
justice gives full justice to all who are oppressed he made known his ways to moses and his deeds to the children of israel glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit <clears throat> as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end
Let us pray. <clears throat> we have consumed, O oh Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your son, Jesus. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with a love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for all the elderly and grandparents. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and to the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Lord bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn can be found at number 210. We will sing verses 1, 2, and 4.